Hi guys, welcome to a video by Antiques Arena. My name is Walter Neal. Just quickly, I am a reseller based in the United Kingdom in South Wales, and I go around antique fairs, car boot sales, charity shops, garage sales, you name it. I go anywhere I can, and I buy things to flip for a profit. Now, I tend to stick to antiques and collectibles, but to be honest with you, there's nothing really I won't buy. Now, the purpose of today's video is to show you my sales through March. Now, I'm concentrating only on March, maybe because that's when we've had this outbreak of the coronavirus. Um, basically, I want to show you what sales I've had. My eBay has increased by over 50%. My sales have doubled almost. Um, and the value wise has gone up by 52.5%. Um, I've had 2,500 pounds worth of sales just in March. It's quite a lot of items, so it's gonna be a long video, but it's gonna be an interesting video. Purpose of the video is to give you an idea of actually what's selling. Now, near enough, everything that's been sold through March has been listed very, very recently. It's not the older stock selling, or very few of the pieces are older stock. So this is fast moving stock. So it'd be interesting for you to see what's sold, how much I've sold it for, um, I know it's not going to be easy for you to get this stuff at the moment, but some of you will have this stuff around your home that you may be able to chuck on and get a quick sale. Some of this stuff is sold literally the same day I've listed it on eBay. So the idea, show you what I've sold and hopefully you'll uh, have an idea for selling. So shall we get started? Give you a little look at what I've sold throughout March. So there's my screen, screen share. Bear with me. Um, we're going to start off here. We got a Jeffrey Baxter White Friars bar, vase. It's a 1960s vase, bark effect coming down in cinnamon, which is a very poor color for this type. You want the bright colors if you can. I was asking 35. Now, this one here, if you look at the image, is an actual souvenir lamp. This is a Welsh miner's lamp, but this has never been down a mine. This is just sold by a souvenir shop, hence the one with the Welsh dragon. The ones you're looking for are Thomas and Williams for a Welsh miner's lamp. Um, however, in saying that, just as a souvenir lamp, I was asking £24 and I achieved £20 within two or three days of listing it. I sold quite a lot of lamps. Now, this one I had in the shop for a very long time. It's a beautiful, well, it's a beautiful uh, polky of Birmingham lamp. It dates to around 1900. Now, I couldn't figure out if it was shipping or if it was railway. So I listed it and I, I didn't know I put shipping and railway in the title and in the description and I left them make their mind up. Well, it's actually gone to a railway museum. So safe to say it was a railway lamp. And I was asking 75, and I actually achieved 50 pounds for that. So I was really pleased with that. That's absolutely fine. And what's more, it's another of my items gone to a museum. Now we got these Worcester egg cordlers. Now I always buy egg cordlers now. I never used to, but after seeing the uh, prices they pull in, um, what, what can I say? I only sell to the United Kingdom. I don't do international sales on ceramics and glass and things because it's just not worth the hassle. But most of these, if you're willing to do international, a lot of them go to Russia and they pull really, really good money. These ones, they're the standard patterns. £55 I was asking and I sold them for 40 I was all happy enough with that. So 10 rupees and the small baby one for free. I didn't mind that at all. This little lot is a collection of Del Prado soldiers. Now these are modern lead soldiers, not old. And I had a large collection of them. Just skip through to give you an idea. For a lot of them, they were in good condition. Really nice little collection to be totally honest with you. Somebody spent a lot of money putting this together. I was asking 125 pound and I sold them for 90. I know I just said I don't send internationally, but that's on ceramics and glass and heavy things with the postage is as dear as the cost of the item. 
However, I had two boxes here, empty boxes for Thomas and Williams miners lamps. Um, they came in a job lot of lamps with boxes and the boxes didn't match the lamps. Otherwise I would have sold them with the lamp. It would have increased the value. But I sold the lamps. Then I listed the two boxes within a day. So less than 24 hours, I sold the both of them. As you see here, a quantity of two highlighted in blue. Uh, they went to Japan and I took a tenner each on them and I had £20 for the two empty boxes. It's a nice little bonus that was. As when I bought them in, the gentleman only valued the lamps. I bought the lamps, the boxes came in for free. So that was 20 quid there for nothing. And uh, got a nice little mid to late Victorian cranberry glass ruffled compote or little bowl, ruffled rim. Uh, it would have had a gadget tool mark on the base. See if I can get that up here. A nice cranberry color. I've not got it. No, I haven't got a picture of the base. It would have had a gadget tool mark on the base. Uh, nice little thing. Good condition. Nice color on there. I was asking 25. I actually achieved 18. Now, this I'm going to go into in a little bit of detail. I absolutely adored this. I bought this back. I think about six or seven months ago, something like that. And this is a bisque porcelain figurine. And it's not no maker mark on maker's mark on it at all. But what it is across the hat was HMS Dreadnought, and along the base was the script We Do Not Want to Fight. It was a perfect bit of propaganda, you know, military, you know, no one in the war and so forth. Anyway, um, I loved it. I've never seen one before and probably won't again. I asked £95 for it and I achieved 70 Little low for what I wanted, but a good price. Now, as you know, I'm closing my shop down at the moment unless the government step in and save the shop. And what I've started doing, where I've been selling single Victorian glasses, 10 a year, £8 there, I've started grouping Victorian glasses together. This is the first set, some really nice rummers. I sold the three of them. I was asking £18. Um, I actually achieved £12.50, which was low, but they're gone. Um, these Victorian glasses, they don't cost me a lot of money. They come in normally for 20 pence, 30 pence each, 50 pence each, something like that. So it was still a good profit, but it was a low, low bid, but they, they're gone. Here we have a Blue Mountain Canadian Pottery Buffalo. Now, this is actually one that's actually been stood around for a while. I've had this one for a little while. This isn't a new, new listing. All the others so far have been new up to this point. However, I bought a collection of this stuff down the boot sale in the summer, and I paid one and two pound a piece. It was worth holding out. I was asking 30 pound for the Buffalo. I achieved 20 pound. So that's quite a big discount, a 30% discount. 33% uh, discount, but pound or two into 20 quid, I can't complain, and it's gone. Again, another old listing of mine. This is a Baxter print. Um, these Baxter prints used to be really, really desirable. Um, and I mean, they used to pull 50, 60 pound. There you go, G Baxter. Uh, Sabrina's the name on this one, and it's number 85. I've got a book on Baxter Prince here, but it is what it is. It said it all there. I didn't actually achieve a lot of money for that £10. It wasn't in the best condition, but it shows how bad the prices have gone on those. This I absolutely adore. Every time I see it, I think of Daleks with Doctor Who with this down here. Look at that. It just looks like a Dalek, and I love it. It's an Empoli uh, Italian glass jug. I was asking £45, I achieved 30 Again, low offer, but I only paid a tenner for it, and a profit's a profit. These, again, were in the shop. I was selling them for £2 each, £3 each in the shop. I chucked them online for £30. It was a nice collection of them. You had Clossone, you had Crystal, you had Jasper with there. A uh, nice pewter one. That's a Cinnabar lacquer one at the back. So it was a nice little collection. They were all done by Franklin Mint. And I think they took about four days to sell. And I actually achieved £20 for those. 
since closing the shop down now, I've started taking the antique boxes out. Sometimes I'd have boxes there just for displaying the right piece of jewellery that weren't for sale. Um, and what I've done, I've actually listed them online. You can see they're really nice boxes, proper antique boxes. And I listed them up. I was asking £28 for those. And I actually achieved £25. But I had dozens and dozens of offers within the first two days. And they sold literally within the first three or four days. So antique boxes, guys, well worth getting. This little beauty here um, is a silver jubilee mug, which royalty stuff does struggle now and again. But this was a Welsh one. You had the Workman's Institute on the front, Windsor Collieries Hall of Abertridu. So Abertridu literally is three or four miles from my current location now. So it's uh, it's not far as a crow flies. And I was asking £15 for that. And I actually achieved £15 within an hour. So I listed it and it sold within an hour. So I should have up the price on that one. Again, we've got more boxes, guys. Um, this one here was a particularly nice one with the faux tortoise shell finish. Really nice. Anyway, I was asking 24 on those, and I actually got 24 on those. Full asking price. They sold literally within an hour again. We have another group of Victorian glasses. As you see there, I've got... Okay. So we got, uh, we've got a little rummer. We've got a tumbler here. We've got a little firing glass, shot glass, and just a standard sherry. Just a standard glass. Um, £22 asking and £20 achieved. So a fibre glass. I don't mind that. It's not fortunes, but it's clearing stock out and getting money in. This one, um, been listed about three weeks, maybe four weeks. It's Murano glass, electric blue, and I mean it was absolutely stunning. If I pull it up, I don't know whether you can see the colours tidy on you. Really nice, strong electric blue. Beautiful colouring. Um, it was up for £45. I actually achieved £35 for that. Again, more Italian glass in Pauli. As you know, I do a lot of Italian glass. £24 asking, I achieved £20. I've actually sold a few of this ship. Anybody that wants to identify your um, glass, just quickly, you go to this website here and click on Encyclopedia. So that's your uh, domain name, which is 20thCenturyGlass.com. And you come down and literally they will give you all the makes. And you just click on one and just search through for the piece you got. It's that simple. All right, so that's a good website to have in your portfolio, guys. Again, we got another miner's lamp, another reproduction or souvenir for there with the Welsh dragon on it, asking 24 pounds. And I achieved 24 pounds literally within a few hours. Full asking price on that one. This I've had for a while. It was rolled gold. Um, now there's a lot of debate on rolled gold. This isn't gold plated, rolled gold has got gold content. Now, it'll depend on what it says on there. You know, half the time it's 20 microns, 9 carat, or 20 microns, 18 carat, whatever. But there is a specific amount of gold in this rolled into the metal. Now, this one was 45 grams, and I sold it. I was asking 95 pound, and I actually sold it for 70. So I sold it for about 1.70 a gram. And to be honest with you, I probably done myself out of money there because. The, the smelters I use in Birmingham, if I send them up a few kilos of this roll gold, they'll melt it down and they'll pay me out on whatever gold they pull out of it. And I actually think I would have done better than the £70 in gold content. People say roll gold is just gold plate. It isn't. It is actually worth money and they do buy it at the smelters. I save it up and believe me, I'll be sending kilos of the stuff away this year. This is a traditional spode Italian pattern biscuit barrel. Again, 
sold within days of going on. Thirty pound asking sold for twenty five. Waterford Crystal Dish. Now I had a couple of problems with this. They reckon there was a couple of little tiny flea bites on there that I missed. So I give them a four pound refund. And on top of that, I only sold it for eighteen pound. Uh, yeah, eighteen pound I achieved. So that one was seriously disappointing. For a Waterford teardrop dish, it should have been the twenty five. And to be honest with you, the chips would have been seriously tiny. I've had a few um, problems with people literally. Uh, well, I'll give you an example. I had one person, I made a video on it this week, um, receive a Beswick cow off me. And his re reason for replying it was, I found a chip under my uh, under an eyeglass, under a magnifying glass. That's how small the chip was he found. He used an eyeglass, scanned it over to find the tiniest chip he could to return it. So, yeah. Uh, Anyway, we've got a Stuart Crystal biscuit barrel. Really nice quality Stuart Crystal. You could have cut in on that. Beautiful thing. I was asking £30 and I achieved 24 This I sold within an hour or two of putting it on. It was a John Lewis sterling silver picture frame. This was a big picture frame. 8 by 10 it held, but I think the frame itself was like 12 inches by 10. So it was a big lump of silver, fully hallmarked. There's the hallmark there. And I achieved £70 for that. Well, Copenhagen dish, Danish porcelain. Um, I actually had emails asking would I ship it back to Denmark. My answer was no, it's UK shipping only. And I sold it. For the full asking price of fourteen pounds, same day. If anybody's interested, I'm going to show you the marks on the back of the Royal Copenhagen. It's always the wavy lines. There they are. I should have turned that to be totally honest with you. But you, if you look around here, it says Royal Copenhagen in the uh, circle above the crown, Denmark, and then the wavy lines. It's not a lot of money for a piece of Copenhagen, but it wasn't a very special piece. It was just a little dish. This one I've had up for sale for a long time. Believe it or not, I put it up for sale. It was one of my £10 items. I put it up for sale for £10 with no offers and didn't get me no way. Last week, I changed it to £15 no offers and somebody offered me a tenner. It's been up for sale for a tenner for probably two, two months, three months. So it's shocking that when they thought they were having a deal of knocking 30% off, knocking it from 15 to a tenner, they bought it. But a really nice World Open Crystal Tankard for tenner. That was cheap. This I've had for a long time, but i never done anything with it. It's been out in the garage, been in the shop, and back in the garage. I chucked it on 15 quid and sold it for a tenner straight away. Literally. I hadn't done nothing with it. And I'd, I've had it for probably six, seven, eight months, maybe more, maybe a year. And I just couldn't be bothered to do anything with it because of this bit of damage on it here. And um, yeah, put it on, and literally less than a week, I took a tenner for it. Where are we? Uh, shade, yeah, tenner. Now, I've started taking the Beswick or Bezic animals out of the shop, and I've sold a lot of them through March, and as you'll see throughout this film. Now, this one here sold within 10 minutes. The, I done a search on eBay to find comparables, and there was one for sale on eBay, they were asking 85, 90 pounds for it. And to be honest, with you, I thought it was ridiculous. But there was no other comparables. I put mine up for 40 quid, I sold it within five minutes, 40 quid, full asking price. Literally, don't think it was up for five minutes, it was gone. So I don't mind that at all. To be honest, with you, I don't think I was asking 30, 35 quid for it in the shop. Um, so I actually done a better price. Satsuma Vars was very disappointing, but this is so out of trend now. And this is a Meiji period um, bars. You're talking 18, 19, 1900 and date. I was asking 25 pound for it. To 14 pound. That was a seriously low price. But in all honesty, it was dead money. As far as I'm concerned, I wanted it out. Wanted it gone. Put that 14 pound in something else. An 1897. 
for the Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee, and I achieved twenty pounds. Full asking price on that. This I bought in the summer, listed it in the summer, and I've done nothing with it. If sat on eBay for probably four months, five months, and I added a for eighty-five, and where I've been having send offers to buyers, I just went off oh, fifty-five quid, send an offer to buyer. It's a wax one. This is made of wax rather than the standard silhouettes. Um, they hit they hit the yes button, fifty-five pound, but it came in so cheap. I just wanted it gone. And fifty-five pound is nothing to be sniffed at. These are all handmade pieces. I done a video just on uh, this company. Beautiful little things. They do a lot of carnival horses. I was asking 35 for it. I actually achieved 25. Okay, moving on. Um, next piece I had, guys, was this 1934 trade union book. Um, I was asking 35 pound for this. Bear with me now. I just had to uh, get all these things back up. Union book. I achieved £20, which was a low offer. They were all selling £25 to £30. But in in light of what I paid for it, I took the offer and it was gone. These, I could have photographed better, to be totally honest with you. They were jade, nice pieces of jade on nine carat gold. But there was next to no gold value in them at all. Um Listed at £25, and I think I haven't actually wrote the price down, but I think I achieved full price for them. 14 karat gold. So it wasn't a gram of gold in them, though, guys, in all honesty. The jade would have been heavier than the gold. But jade earrings for 25 quid, there's nothing wrong with that. Now we have a little bit of Beswick again from the shop. Now I sold this one and another one that's coming up in a minute. £10 each to a gentleman. And they are the Beswick. Uh, I've got a stamp to show you. You can see there. There's the Beswick stamp. That's what it looks like. It's a variety of Beswick stamps. Anyway, the fox went for ten pound, and this dog. So the same person went for ten pound. Paid twenty quid for the two of them. We have a Beswick pig. Again, similar sort of thing. I was asking 35, I took an offer of 25 on this. But all this bears with guys, it sold literally within two days of going on, one or two days of being listed. Now we have a Danish serving set. Now it's a retro set. You got the cheese slice there, or cheese cutter there, you got the ladle, and I think that's like a cake serving slice. Uh, but there, I was asking eighteen pound, and I achieved thirteen. Bit of retro, and it came in cheap enough in spot about two months ago. Again, I don't think it was on eBay for a week. We had a pair of Edinburgh Crystal cut glass brandy balloons. They are signed ones. There's the signature there anybody's interested in signatures there you go and i had full price for them 12 pounds they sold very fast all of this stuff is just new listed as i bring it from the shop i'm listening it's just going bang 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 and selling straight away this rugby figure sold it 20 pounds straight away didn't hesitate paid full asking price and it's only a staffordshire idols it wasn't a grog or nothing uh there's the mark staffordshire idols it was a dated one from the 80s, 1985, but still 20 quid, happy enough. We got another miner's lamp. I actually achieved 30 pound for this one. This is a British coal mining company. Again, not a Thompson Williams that put you after, but 30 pound, more than happy with that. As you can see, I've sold a lot of lamps throughout March, but I had a large collection of miner's lamps in the shop. This is an old listing. It's a Tudor crystal vase that I've had listed for probably six months. I achieved £15 on this just to get it gone and cleared. It was a cheap price, but it's gone. 
Uh, brand new listing, Dartington Crystal Hurricane Lamp. So this top comes off. And it takes like a tea light and it's designed to stop the wind. Hence the term hurricane lamp. And I was asking £20 and sold it for 15 pretty quick. This is gorgeous. It was on for about two hours. It's nine karat gold and you've got a variety of different colour jades. All these are different colour jades. It was really, really nice. Nine karat gold, as I said. It wasn't very heavy. I was asking £55 for it. I was offered 40 quid, I think, within the hour. And I just said, you know what, for what it cost me, yes, it's gone. You'll notice there's a theme because of the way things are going at the moment. If I've had what I consider to be a fair offer, I haven't messed about. It's just gone. And that's the way I'm going to be for a while. While stuff's up for sale, I'm buying this stuff in so cheap. And I have got entire shops full of inventory to sell. I've got a double garage. I've got to get through yet to film and sell. I've got two outbuildings to get through and sell. So I, I'm sorted for probably a year of selling at this rate. We got an old school bell here. I love this one. What I liked about this was the some naughty student or pupil has drawn smiley faces all the way around the bell. Uh, asking £35, sold for 25 Always do well on school bells. Now, the shade, I sold four of these. A gentleman, a designer up in London bought four individually. So he paid 12 12 12 and he paid because of the size of them. The weight, there was no weight, but the size, there goes a medium parcel. So they were six pound a piece. Well, I refunded him all the postages by one and put them all in one box. Uh, but 46 pound for four of them because one of them he had at a tenner. So they were all right. Over the moon with them. Serving set. Nice silver banded. Hallmark silver banded there, as you can see. Nice set, boxed. Really good looking thing. 30 pound they knocked off the postage. I had 26. Now, you've got to be careful. You can't put knives, carving sets on eBay, but that was a serving set. It was different. That wasn't an actual knife. Another Beswick Hound. I achieved £12 on this one instead of 15 Again, the Beswick's flying out the door. Another one, I achieved £12 again. Now, this one, um, a gentleman called Fritz bought this off me. He's a subscriber. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. As I've said earlier, I don't normally ship overseas. However, I do make exceptions when it comes to followers of my channel. So if it's someone you like, if I think I can get it to you safely and at a reasonable cost, I will ship it overseas. Um, I don't offer that service on eBay as a rule, but I will offer it to people who subscribe to my channel. Um, so he paid me £18.50 for that plus postage. So I just hope when he gets there, he's happy. Uh, we have a Victorian jug with a lozenge mark. Now, what's good about these with a lozenge mark? Let's get to a lozenge mark to show you. That is a lozenge mark. Let me hide this. So basically, this will tell you the day, the month, and the year, and the batch number that it was made. So... I've actually done a video on uh, dating off lozenge marks. So this one was made. Have I dated it? No, I haven't even took the time to date it. <laughs> That's just laziness on my part, that is, guys. I would have actually achieved more money if I bothered to date it. Because you can date it to the day. I think I've sold another one. We'll have a look if I've dated that one for you. Again, we have another miner's lamp. And this one is another British coal company. And I had full price, £25, and it sold for £25. These miners' lamps haven't been on for a day or two, so they're really doing well. Beaker, again, sold it within hours of going on, uh, £10, and I sold it for £10. Full asking price, probably within an hour. This came in with a whole heap of jade that I bought, uh, jade bracelets, earrings, pendants, you name it. I bought a whole heap of this stuff in. I put this up to £35 and I achieved £25 for that. Again, super quick. This I've had for a long, long time. I think it's a champagne cooler or a wine cooler. 
It looks a lot like a log bucket, but it's, it's not. Um, I'm pretty confident that that was a cooler or oh, an ice bucket, and that's exactly how I sold it. And I achieved £45, but I have had that for probably a year. So that's been a slow seller. Brass and mahogany handle gavel, uh, auctioneer's gavel. It was scratched to hell. It was used, and I photographed it and told them that it was used. Um, you can see there the condition. It didn't mess about. They told them exactly what they were getting, and they paid full asking price, £12. Didn't knock me down. And I sold again, no time at all. This is another old one. It's a Majolica, Majolica plate with the scene of Neptune on there. Uh, probably German. I've got three left. I started off with 14 of these about eight, eight months ago, nine months ago, and down to three. And they, this sold for £15 for this one. So that's all right. They go in slowly and they come in. Be honest, they come in for next to nothing. They really did. They bought the set for cheaper. Uh, as I've said to you already, instead of selling things individually, I'm grouping things now if the value's not there. I asked £20 on these horse brasses and I achieved £20. It's cheap enough, less than two quid a horse brass. You know, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. It's a nice little group there. It was a few nice ones. Uh, maybe three feathers here, a couple of horse ones. Sure, there was a couple of nicer ones here. Cat is quite nice. Anyway, uh, horse brasses, they're not fortunes. I wouldn't waste my time selling them a pound or two each. 20 quid on eBay, they're gone. I actually done a couple of videos on things not to buy. And Wedgwood Jasper, where it just doesn't sell anymore, it is absolutely terrible. And you know what? It's a big bowl, but I sold it within two minutes of listing it. Well, asking price as well, £12. So, yeah, if they're coming in for 50p, maybe it's worth considering if they're a big enough piece. Um, yeah, I wouldn't have bought that as a rule if I saw it now because there's so much wedge with Jasper we're on this out of 50 pence a pound, and there's me back in the trend again, £12 for one. So, that was a bit of a shock. More Beswick, uh, Spaniel, I was asking 22 and I accepted 15. These I sold twice. Uh, they are solid silver from the Gulf. Silver camels in a frame. They're not flat. They are 3D. That frame's stepped, so it's quite a deep frame. Uh, I was asking £30 and I achieved 25 So they were okay, but I sold them literally within five minutes of listing them the first time and got messed about. I just said to him, if you want to cancel the sale, I'll cancel it. I won't even hit you with a strike. Just don't mess me about. He said, oh, yeah, I can't pay. My PayPal's frozen. Can you cancel this? So I canceled it. listed them. They were sold again by the following morning for more money. So I didn't mind. We got an Art Deco in style. Not in period, guys. This is in style. It's probably 20-year-old, 30-year-old. It's bronze, and it's a uh, rampant lion. Or an art deck or looking lion. So, and I achieved £18 for that. So, not bad. They only knocked off postage. The Chad Valley teddy bear. This was a really nice one. It was a 1953 and it had the special label on it. So, that is the uh, royal label for the 1953 Chad Valley. I was asking 40 and I achieved £30 on that. But it was worn. It was. You could see there, look at the wear on the face and that, all around the face, the nose. But oh, he was a beautiful one. He had full of character and he was gorgeous. And again, sold within days. Same day sale, Bakelite phone. Uh, asking 45 and they offered me 40. And that's with 15 pound postage, mind. So didn't do bad on that. It was over the moon with that. And that hadn't been converted yet. You can convert these phones to modern phone lines, but I hadn't done it. I had an offer on these Bowden Nova glasses um, earlier on in the week. They'd been on for about a month, three to four weeks, and I pressed the wrong button. I was going to accept it. I was offered something like 20 quid from, and I hit decline instead of accept. Well, I'm glad I did, because they sold full asking price, £30, about a week later. 
So, and I was actually kicking myself with those things and I didn't accept it. So that worked out all right. This is quite nice. Big lump of Kribska glass, mid-century. Big lump for what it is. I didn't sell it for a lot of money. I took 20 quid on it. But it doesn't pull fortunes unless you've got really good shape. If I was asking 30, I took 20. This, I've got a couple of lots that I've sold. Um, I had visitors up recently, if you remember, Owen and his family, and they sold me a collection of stuff, Lalique and some trench art and things. Well, this is the first of the pieces I've managed to sell of it from him. I was asking 25 pound and I achieved 20. Really nice, Royal Artillery matchbox holder. And on the other side of it, I had the bullet. Uh, it was quite a nice little uh, matchbox, and I achieved £20 for that, so I was over the moon with that. Right, so this one, again, mid-Victorian jug, and it should have a lozenge mark on this one. Yes, so you can see there it's got another lozenge mark there, so it tells you exactly the day, the month, the year, the batch number, everything. All right, so let's see if I've been lazy on this one. Oh, have I dated it? Um, I dated this one. Huh? Dates the jug to the 22nd of June, 1852. So I, I don't know why I didn't do it on the last one. I was lazy. But this one I actually rated. it. I put it up for 45 and achieved £35. Really nice jug. I love the uh, little cherubs or putties, whatever you want to call them, and the pewter lid. It was a nice jug. This one I made a mistake on, I think. It was a studio pottery jug. Um, and it had a nice inscription, basically. I can't see it on the picture tidy there. What did it say? And it read, He'll get but short measure from Parliament houses, so vote with a pint in the seat of E trousers. General election, 1970. So basically, it was telling you, don't matter who you vote for. You ain't getting away. And literally, I listed it £35. And by the time I clicked refresh the page, it sold at £35. So I think it was underpriced on that one. However, it's been up for sale in the shop for 20 quid for three months, four months, maybe more. And it haven't gone. So I actually achieved a good price. Now, this one shocked me. Well, I didn't know what the price this had. I had this up at 25 quid in the shop. And when I actually went online, I saw you can buy brand new sets for 10 and 15 pounds. I thought, well, are they really going to spend more money on an antique or vintage set um, when they can buy a brand new set, for like a tenner? And then I thought, well, maybe they'll want them for display, not for use. So I put them up for 25 and literally I had 24 pounds from straight away, plus the uh, 15 pound shipping. The reason I'm £15 on shipping, I send by Royal Mail, and anything that goes over two kilos goes by Royal Mail parcel post, which is starts at like £14, give or take a couple of pence. However, I have learned this week, if I do click and collect, I can do second class recorded up to 20 kilos for like a tenner. So I'm going to be doing the cheaper option from now on. But you can't do it in the post office, which I don't think is fair. You can only do the dearer option in the post office. So you've got a post office giving their, their business to parcel force rather than allowing you to do second class recorded on the heavier in the part in the post office, which I'm going to do a video on that. It's quite confusing. Don't understand why. Anyway, you've got a nice little red advertising tire, ashtray. Uh, this had a couple of chips and way. Um, and I did put it all in the description, um, well photographed. So if you look here, you can see there, I put the chips in. I haven't beat around the bush. And the way on the... So you can see the way there on the tyre. And I still achieved £15 when I was asking 20 And again, all this stuff, guys, I've sold in no time at all. Now, when I bought this, I thought, all right, maybe it's a 70s, 80s, 90s copy of an original Sunburst mirror. Um, I didn't actually realize that it was signed. There you go. Richard Pell down with Ella. I noticed somehow when I was 
just clean it up, ready for photograph. And it just caught my eye. And when I looked him up, he was pulling for reasonable money. Well, I listed it for 55. And I achieved 45 pounds, literally less than a week. So that was a good little investment. This is another piece I had off Owen and his family. We got an Allen Bay iridescent glass vase. Really nice, pretty little thing. Um, about seven and eight inches tall. Lovely uh, finish to it. Look at that. Anyway, I was asking 22. I achieved 18. These are unsigned, but they were good quality. Just give me a look at the quality I have, guys. Really nice cut glass crystal, unsigned though. Now, normally I don't do unsigned crystal on eBay because it just gets lost in the waves of crystal. Um, but because I got I got a list of stuff because it's no longer going to be in the shop, I thought I'll put them on anyway. Any cut crystal glass is worth a fiber of glass, whether it's signed or not. Well, I achieved, what did I achieve? I achieved the full 22 pound from, which is less than five pound of glass, but they weren't signed. Uh, but I thought they were worth 22 pound and so did somebody else. So literally straight away. So somebody during this lockdown is gonna get drunk using my glasses. We got another Beswick horse, Palomino. Uh, this is a tiny, small foal. And I asked 25, achieved 20. We have the Beswick cow. Now, this is the one that caused the big problem where the buyer said they were they used an eyeglass. Now, I used an eyeglass to do a photograph. That is the chip there. And it's not really a chip. It was just a bit where the glaze didn't take on the ear. But that is seriously, seriously zoomed in. If you have any idea how small that year is, that is the size of a top of a pin. And I had it sent back for that. Anyway, I relisted it and I sold it again within no time at all for £18. So happy enough with that. These I undersold. They were absolutely gorgeous. Set of six. I bought them in recently. They literally, they, they were on eBay three days, two or three days, and it was the first time they'd been anywhere. Shop been shut since I bought them, and I'd only just listed them on eBay. They were absolutely stunning. Now, normally, I'd get 15 or 20 pound a glass for these, and the fact is, a set of six, it should have been worth more. Now, I listed them at 95, and I was offered 70 pound. Because they come in so cheap, I thought, do you know what? I'm just going to take the profit. But we both had a really good deal on them. Um, they bought them at 12, less than 12 pound a glass. Uh, for those, that's good. These are stunning. The only knives you can sell on eBay are cutlery. You can't do carving knives and things like that, but you can do knife and fork. Uh, solid silver handles, uh viners of sheffield so they were a really good make i was asking 75 i took 65 within a day and there's not a lot of silver in these handles i think i've done an experiment film showing them so that was good these were nice uh jade cylinder drop earrings nine carat gold mounts really nice green spinach jade um Got a lot of gold in them, but the jade was stunning. He was asking 45, and I got offered 40, which I accepted. He only knocked off the postage. You got a soapstone, Chinese soapstone tiger. Now, this is not an old one. It is signed. Here's a signed one. Um, there. So, you got this sort of... Qing mark here, Qing Dynasty mark here. There was some other impressed marks as well. You've got a mark here, and there was a couple of marks around the other that haven't picked up very well. And obviously the six there. So there were a few marks on there. It was nothing special. It wasn't old or nothing like that. Uh, but it was a really nice looking tiger and had a bit of quality feel to it. And I did, did rate it for a bit of soapstone. Even the base was all hand carved, so it was nice. And I achieved £20 for that. Little bronze, 
and I mean 20th century, late 20th century, Chinese bronze of an immortal elder. 20 pound, I achieved 15. Now, one way of telling, we need to look at these, you need to think, well, I don't know how they're bronze. When is this color? Just get the underneath. Have I done it? I don't think I've watched photo of the underneath. Get to the underneath, we'll give it a good gouge. If it's yellow metal under the gouge, it's bronze. If it's white, then it's just spelter or cast iron or it's another material. Again, we have a reproduction miner's snuff box in brass. Same as the lamp slot, it's got the Welsh Dragon and Cymru, which is a souvenir way, not the original stuff. And I achieved £12, but he emailed me then afterwards and said, I didn't mean to hit the bite now, I meant to... Um, I meant to make an offer of a tenner. So I, I said, don't worry about it. I'll just send you two quid back. Can I give him two pound refund? I thought, I'm not going to lose the sale for two quid. So I actually achieved a tenner on it. Uh, Edinburgh Crystal Decanter. Here with me a second. Ah, I got it. Asking 35, I achieved 25. But this is absolutely stunning crystal. To be honest, though, we should have been double what I've sold it for. Um, don't know why I put it on so cheap to be honest with you. that was a really really nice quality whiskey decanter signed as well it was underpriced but 25 quid I pick these decanters up all the time for between 3 and 5 pounds people can't tell the difference between crystal and cut glass and pressed glass that was a corker of a decanter Winston Churchill up to 20 pounds, sold for 20 pounds. This one was about six inches by Roald Dalton. There you go. Um, markets flooded with these Winston Churchill ones. Because it was Winston Churchill, everybody kept them. So the value was low, but I'm pleased I achieved the 20 pound asking price. If you uh, follow my videos and you see the videos tour in the shop, you'll know I had a wooden display cabinet full of just brass animals and things. Well, I've started grouping them, and I'm listing them as groups. This was a group of four stags and does, deers, and I asked £22 for them, and I sold them for £15 within two hours of going on. As far as I'm concerned, I was only asking £3 a piece in the shop anyway, so I've achieved more than what they were actually at sale for. And finally, on the lots, we have this very small... Ridgeway willow pattern blue and white plate, twelve pounds, and I achieved a tenner. So, what can I say? As you can see, there's a lot of sales there for March. I don't know if things are going to keep going as they are. I think it's partly to do with the fact people are not out buying, so they're not putting the stock onto eBay. So the availability is becoming uh, less and less, which if that's the case, then I can sell a lot of stock over the next few months while the lockdown's in place. So there is at least that element of it where I can actually sell some of my old stock. And I'm very fortunate, not many people are, I'm very fortunate I'm a bit of a hoarder. I've got an attic full of um, empty boxes as well. So I haven't even got a problem with packing materials. Um, I'm very, very, very fortunate to be talking to honest with you. If you take a look at all of that stuff there, 99% of that have sold in less than seven days of being listed on eBay. I've taken some low offers, but will you have to take into account, let's be totally honest, this is all secondhand ceramics, glass, metalware. It doesn't really hold any intrinsic value like gold and silver would. It's only worth what people are willing to pay. And if we got a recession on the way coming now, the way I'm looking at it, if I have a fair offer, I'm taking the offer. It's that simple. It may not be what I wanted, but if it's a fair offer and it's giving me a good profit, it's out the door and that money's going to sit in the bank just in case I need it. Now, I had a good month, as I've said. It was more than more than the 2500 that was on my um, eBay page because there was four or five days short because... They'd only done 31 days for March, and it's the 4th of April now, so I lost the three days uh, at the beginning. So it was probably about £2,800 for March, somewhere on by there. And I think the average sale price was about £35 
by the time I finished the month. So that's not bad at all. I'm really pleased with that. And already we're in April and I'm back to listing hard. I'm listing between 20 and 30 pieces a day at the moment and selling a few every single day. And I sell some high, high priced items, so it adds up fast. So the only downside I got with it is at the moment, I've got an empty shop that still cost me pretty much £300 a week to have sitting there empty. So it's swallowing up a huge amount of my sales. My eBay bill this month was £400 just to eBay. I know, that's shocking, isn't it? <laughs> oh, my God, I'm crying, cringing. So if you work out, £400 of that, two and a half grand, three grand went to eBay. I lost £1,200 at the shop. That's £1,600. Let's say another five, six hundred pound in cost of the stock. So that's twenty one hundred, let's say. So realistically, in the month, I've actually profited about six, seven hundred pounds. But it looks amazing on paper. Um, and let's be honest, it's impressive to sell that amount of stock in the month. In what I'm selling, antiques and collectibles, during the crisis we're in, uh, where people got the fear of recession, the fear of the coronavirus and everything else, I think it's quite exceptional. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Please feel free to leave any comments you like. Hopefully, if you've got any of this stuff that I've shown today, get it listed, get it sold straight away. It's selling fast. Um, other than that, it's an update for you guys. Hopefully, you've enjoyed. I want to thank you, every single person who have supported me so far, and I hope you continue to support me. Even though I'm giving the shop up, I will continue to make the videos from home. Guys, if you have enjoyed, I would really, really appreciate a like and a share. Don't forget, thumbs up means a lot, and feel free to leave a comment. I don't care, negative or good. doesn't matter to me. I don't expect everybody to like all my videos or like all my stock or all my sales. I'll take the good with the bad. Guys, thanks for watching. Bye for now.